Oh, it's so good to be back here at, uh, at NodeConf and um, talking about ORMs. I really wanted to do this talk for a very long time. And I, uh, in order to do it, I actually had to start a company. I don't know. It's, it's very weird. Um, so yeah, um, follow me on Twitter if you haven't already. But if you haven't already, probably you want to. You're not here, so I don't know. Anyway, uh, yay. So uh, at Matteo Collina, you probably know me. If not, subscribe to, oh, sorry. It was not supposed to happen. Cool. Funny. OK. You know, demo gods. OK. The demo gods. Ah. Ah, now I understand what's going on, what's happening. OK. Nodeland.dev, here we go. Uh, I don't know. Follow me. Anyway, I'm the CTO of Platformatic. You can find a box of t-shirts down there. We, we are a young company, just a few months old, and we didn't have the time to do a full booth. But we have a box of t-shirts. So if you want to grab one, come and grab one. Um, so anyway, let's talk about object relational mapping. How many of you is using our RAM? OK. I think the other half is still using an ORM. I don't know. It's just one of those questions. Anyway, what does this do? This maps uh, uh, relational databases to um, uh, objects. OK, so you can actually you know, have fancy objects that maps your, uh, to your databases. Is this good? Is it bad? Is it just neutral? I don't know. I'm not a fan. So OK. So uh, when ORMs were uh, introduced, they actually started promising a, a rainbow land of, with unicorns and rainbows. OK, I don't have a fancy slide like Cody. Uh, um, but I have a bunch of spaghetti. <laughs> Just like that. Um, so basically, they're all neat. OK, and they were presented like, oh, this is going to become very neat and straight. Everything will be very organized. And we're going to use a lot of models to, model, to, to, to develop our application. It's good, right? And then we will have relations between those models. So we can actually navigate our code base just by using those relations. Oh, so nice, so neat. This is a brilliant idea. It's brilliant. OK. Um, do you know what happens when your application uses an ORM? It hibernates. <laughs> and if you don't, if you're getting this joke, you're not having coded enough Java in your life. OK. <laughs> And um, yeah, and by the way, the, the image was done by Dali, so you know it's, it's you know just so. Anyway, um, what the problem with uh, ORMs and the concept of models? Okay, uh, models uh, typically are uh, are work like that. So you extend them, and then you have like there a uh, save and delete and those type of function that sits on the model itself. And then they have, you also put business logic in there. Typically, you do a like, and you, you, do, you do all those nice things. It's cool, right? It's all contained. Like, I put the, the logic of, my, of handling my database and the business logic in the same place. It's, you know, it's. Now, the problem is that this is not work great. This does not work great, OK? Once you have thousands of them, you are in trouble because you don't know what's going to happen in your code anymore. It's really, really, really difficult to untangle a large code base that is built upon the concept of, of models. Um, in fact, you, pro you probably have seen, used, used a few model view controller systems in your, in your life where you have a models folder. How many of you have a models folder in your code? OK, I'm, I'm talking to you. You might have 2,000 modules, 2,000 models in your application very soon. So probably not easy. Uh, uh, when you're building an MVC app, and this is the problem with all MVC app systems, you have a model view and controller. And whenever you need to add a new feature, it's either a model of your controller. And the problem is that most of the time, we are not doing use anymore. So we even have a controller or a model. Ouch. But we don't do controllers in Node. We just use routes and so on. So we just have models. And it basically becomes, well, um, some big, big block of spaghetti code, okay? And by the way, I love carbonara. I really love carbonara, okay? So just to clarify. So talk about Fastify. Why does it matter? Why is it going to Fastify? We're talking about ORMs. Yeah, well, if you're doing an MVC system, you might want to do something slightly different than MVC because MVC, how can I structure my code to grow long term? 
if I only have two back, three buckets to put, to, to put my stuff in. But with uh, Fastify, but also other stuff, I can actually structure it by features, not by um, system, not by features, not really by, uh, you know, what table in my database I'm sticking my stuff on. So, okay, so this is slightly better. Help organize the code, but also it can help uh, doing, uh, you can, it's actually the starting step for going multiple processes and doing microservices, which is also pretty fun. And again, we are doing uh, working of coding the large type of thing. Okay, so uh, we are going back to our friend, old friend Pareto and 8020, which is a nice picture, by the way. And uh, um, uh, with, uh, uh, with Pareto, you have a very fancy thing where, you know, 80%, uh, 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 like only 20% of the causes leads to 80% uh, 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 of the outcomes, which in practice means that if we need to develop some code, only 20% is at the end. It's, it responds to 80% to of the effort, which is pretty bad. So you're picking a framework and you're picking a technology, okay? And whenever you're picking that technology, okay, what would you optimize for, okay? What stack, what things would you optimize for? Would you optimize for something that's go at the start of the project, something that is very easy to get you started with, that has a good generator, a good tutorial or whatever, or something that um, is very good for developing complex features, okay? What would you choose? Ha. Look, it's, uh, you can choose something that's good for doing repetitive tasks or something that's good to maximum flexibility. Those are the two, the two brackets. So uh, we, ORMs uh, typically do uh, do something very funny because uh, the ORMs simplify the, uh, at the beginning, okay? They simplify writing models, they, do, they simplify things. However, at the end of the journey, you're still having to write some, I don't know, 10% of code that is very custom, very specific. You need to write some very hard SQL by hand that's not easy to maintain or anything and you're actually fighting against your ORM because you have the types and everything is it's not working, okay? So, uh, what can we do, okay? Um, know that we are also, if you're using an ORM, you're also exposing your models as routes, okay? So you're doing some work here and so on. Cool, um, what can we do, okay? Well, I claim that the best line of code is the one that I don't have to type or maintain, mostly, maintain. I have a lot of open source. 12 billion dollars per year. So best line of code, the one that I don't have to maintain, myself at least. Um, might be somebody else's problem. Anyway, uh, so I, I'm a backend engineer and when I'm picking up a backend, I really want something that can uh, be run uh, locally and it's something that can be, uh, you know, can be extended very easily. You could use SQL, you could use code, you can actually put a lot of custom stuff in. I built a freaking framework on the concept of extensibility of plugins, right? So uh, I want something that provides a basic some basic level of authorization baked in. Authorization is, is one of those things that takes a lot of time to do it. Very few people know how to do it right. Most people will make a mess, myself included, and you don't want to repeat it to repeat it again. So um, something that gives me the basic done that I don't need to think too much about it and trust what's done, it's, it's very important. Um, I want GraphQL, but I also want REST and OpenAPI. I love REST, okay? I also love GraphQL. Why fight? Um, use what's best for you. Then you could use Apollo Federation because you want to federate your GraphQL schemas. And oh, I want also something that actually can deploy on, on my cloud on servers that I maintain. It's not something like, what's the fancy term? Cloud-prem. Ah, this is fancy, it's a buzzword, okay? And they want something that just runs multiple databases, not something fancy that can only run the cloud or whatever. I just want something that can run uh, on multiple databases and don't worry about it. Okay. Mostly, I also want all of this and I don't want to write it when I need to write a new application. Like I'm building a new startup, so we are probably having some database somewhere at some point in the cloud. And uh, it's, um, yeah, I, 
I, we didn't want to do it all of this from scratch again, right? So, uh, you know, I, uh, you like cakes, I presume. If you don't, I'm sorry. There's a lot of sugar in these lights, so if, it's, if that hurts you, by cover your eyes. Anyway, I want to have the cake, okay? But also eat the cake. Because, you know, you can even have the cake or eat it too, but I want both. I want to, to have, a, you know, a backend that is super flexible, super extensible, but it also absolutely spend no time writing it. Ouch. How can we make it happen? How can I make it happen? Um, so, yeah. Okay, so that's what we are doing at, uh, at Platformatic, okay? The first open source tool that we have, uh, that we have released is a thing called Platformatic DB. And it's something that can help you out remove, uh, do all the repetitive tasks, but also enable maximum flexibility for your code. We have a bunch of docs, okay? At uh, oss.platformatic.dev, you can check out all our docs. It's very, in, it's very nice uh, docs. It's built on Docusaurus 2. There's a fancy stack down there, so you can also check out that the website is built. Um, uh, and by the way, we were, well, this was never private, we just, it was open source all the time, but nobody was looking, so, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so what, uh, uh, how does Platformatic DB work and how Platformatic uh, does, uh, uh, how we envision development? So uh, with Platformatic DB over here, you, you know, you typically, the developers typically write the, their own schema, the migrations, you apply them, then in, uh, you set micro, uh, Platformatic DB up, and then, whenever you're needed, sometime later, you can just write your custom code. There is nothing else that you need to do to get up and running with some basic CRUD functionality. You can just write your custom SQL, write your custom code. And why do you say you stress so much about writing the custom SQL? Well, you have amazing databases that you're all, all using. In order, when you're using an ORM, they need to you know, go to the uh, minimum level of features between all of them to provide a common API and you're not using all the power of your database. You know, uh, Postgres has shipped all the JSON amazing things that you can query with, and uh, for years that was not available for, uh, to people using ORMs. Um, same goes for uh, uh, MariaDB and, and my latest version of MariaDB and MySQL, or you know, you might just want to go use good old MySQL 5.7, which is still there and hanging around and not dying, okay? Um, anyway, how does this work? Uh, basically, it's all based around Fastify, and uh, it's, uh, uh, you can just, you know, uh, there is a command line tool, and when it starts, we can just load your plugin. Just works, okay, it's great. So, now, it's a little bit time to make our prayer to the demo gods. And let's hope everything works, because you see, I was fixing my demo uh, on the other side of this wall uh, like half an hour ago. So let's hope everything is fine, okay? So, oh, this one. Okay, NodeConf. And Siri is very happy. And uh, NodeConf directory is, is free, so I just need uh, a little bit of a package JSON, so I'm just creating my package JSON easily. Okay, uh, after that, uh, what we're going to do, we can, we have Platformatic, okay? Oh, npm i Platformatic. Oh, Matic dash G. And we are going to install it, okay? It's downloading from npm, so we'll see if the network is working fine. As you see, it's all live, okay? So I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not completely not complaining about this stuff. So um, here we go, <laughs> takes a bit of time. Do you know that npm is low, right? It's downloading 600 modules now, so, and compiling some. You will see the tree and, and so on and so forth, okay? Takes a bit. Uh, we also have a Docker image if you want to play with it, with just downloading 200 megabits in one block. So you, you pick your poison. Anyway, 453 packages. So we have Platformatic, okay? And now it's, we can get the version, and it's version 0 0.1, okay? Remember this. It's the one that we released a, little, a week ago. Okay, so in order to start, we can do uh, Platformatic as, as a few commands. You can see Platformatic help. So we have help and DB, but there will be more tools coming, so tune in. We can init our project by just running Platformatic DB in it. 
uh, after we have run Platformatic DB init, it complains that we need to install some dependencies. Why? Well, because we want to auto completion. So if you want auto completion, you might want to run to get those things installed. So what we do is we'll, oh, sorry. We'll just copy this up and I am going to install the things, all the things. Okay, so, and here we go. This is installing. Oh, oh, interesting. This crashed. Oh, I am. Yeah, I am. I do have. Ah. Yeah, just a second. Ah. Yeah, I did mess it up. Thank God. CD node conf. Okay. So, okay. Here we go. We are installing this. Good. And then platformatic in it. Yeah, platformatic DB in it to get it done. Okay. Now, what is it has created for us? This has created a few things for us. It has created a new migration for the movies uh, table. Do you like movies? Yeah, okay. So we're going to do some movie stuff, okay? So uh, how, do you, how do we use this? We run it with platformatic DB migrate. So we run our migrations, okay? It's all, the system has always also created us a file called plugin.js so that we will extend our platformatic database um, later. So now we can actually open this up and look at our platformatic db.json, which includes um, some um, interesting uh, configuration from the types to the uh, connection strings and so on and so forth. So what we do now, we can do platformatic db, and this automatically starts, and uh, we can open this up. Cool, welcome to platformatic db. Okay, we have something here, let's just zoom in. And it's now what we can do, we can go to graphical. Do you like graphical? Yay! You should like, oh, it's fancy. The power of the internet. It's downloading it from Unpackage now, and it's taking some time. I should have this open already. Okay, before going to type graphical, because it's, it's loading up, and uh, we, I can show you the um, a Swagger UI. So the other feature that, is, uh, uh, that we provide is com fully and complete uh, open API generation and, and the routes. So, okay, and graphical also came online. Good. So um, can you see this, hopefully? Why? It's not. Sorry. Okay. So what we can do now is, for example, we can do a mutation. And in our mutation, it's we can do save movie and input. Uh, what movie do we want to, 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 so, to save? Oh, I want to say uh, Harry Potter. I want to save Harry Potter. Do you like Harry Potter? Hopefully so. I like Harry Potter. ED and title. Okay, so now we can run this and we see it's saved. Okay, uh, let's do a quick check with our uh, Zwagger. And let's run from the get movies, okay? Which you see there is a lot of properties here that we are not going to look at. But what we can do is try it out. So if we want to try movies, we can actually execute our query. And you can see that it's, uh, it is executing a, a command that has resulted in this output, which is Harry Potter. So it's all completely working both ways. So back to graphical, okay? And in here, so uh, what can we do with, with, this, with this movie? Well, we can do quite a few things. So this is uh, Harry Potter. And uh, now we can do a query and we, can, we might want to say movies and uh, you know, the D and title and run this and, oh, I need to add the name, movies. And I can just run this and it was the exact same, okay? I can also specify a lot of things here, like for example, the where clause, 
and I can say that its uh, title is uh, equal to, uh, if I put Star Wars, and uh, it's not, it, oh, sorry, oh, I need to, made a mistake. I need to say it's equal to Star Wars, and it's um, not, movies, it's not showing anything, okay? So it has full filtering capability and so on and so forth. It doesn't provide all the capability of SQL, but it does provide a bit, okay? Why? If you want more, just use SQL and just extend it. We'll see that in a moment, how to do that. Cool, so, but you know, this is not enough, okay? Because we, we are missing one of the key capabilities of uh, um, uh, SQL database, which are relations. So uh, let's, add, let's add one. So what we need to do is, this is running, by the way, okay? So I need to open up my migrations, okay? And creating another one called 002.sql.do.sql, and I can say uh, create table quotes, and I'm going to open up, and yeah, I don't need this, I need ID, which is an integer. I, we are using SQLite to the demo, so, and it's an integer. Uh, and then we need a text, which is a quote. And then we need the mm, movie ID, which is an internet, but it's reference movies ID. And because I'm cheating, where is it? Uh, CD4, okay, cat. Going to double check because demo movies, migrations, 002, because I don't want mistakes. Okay, so I need primary key. Okay, integer not now. Okay, so um, integer primary key. Here we go, primary key. Okay, and integer not now. Cool. Okay, and we need to this. I can just save, okay, and if I go back here, you see that it has automatically run our migration and reloaded everything. So I'm not touching this. I'm just going to refresh my graphical. And now what I can do is I can add a mutation, add quote, and do save, need to reload, save, oh, save movie. Ha, it didn't pick it up. Cool, yay. Very funny. What mistake did I make? You know, the demigods didn't pick it up. Uh, I'm going to restart it now. Haha. <laughs> mm, made a mistake? Aha, you see the demigods. Yeah, no. I did make some mistake. I'm pretty sure I did. So create table quotes. Uh, it's not there. Big time. Funny. You see? Um, let's do this. Uh, oh, where I am. Transformatic, DB, migrate. Hmm. Why is it not picking it up? Haha. <laughs> okay, now it picked it up. Not sure where it was when I was running those comments. So, platformatic, DB, migrate. Let my DB start. Okay, now it's there. Cool, okay. Sorry for this, I don't know what happened. Okay, now we have quotes. Cool. And in here, what we can do is we can save our quote, okay, and we want our input field, and we want the uh, movie ID, and we want to specify it. Oh, I need to save, first we need to save it. Okay, so I just need to copy this up. I need to save a reporter again because I flashed the database. 
So I'm adding a reporter, cool. Then I'm putting ID one, okay? And then I want the quote. I am up to no good. Good. And then we can say that we want the ID and uh, the quote and the movie and, uh, and the title of the movie. Let's see if all of this is working. And add quote. Oh, cool. It's actually navigating the graph. Okay. So we can actually extend our movies here and just add the quotes for those movies and the quote text. And now I can run that and it's still working as, as, as I would expect. Note that we can have also have the full Swagger UI, uh, UI capability to, to navigate and do all the stuff. Cool. Okay. So, uh, however, you know, it's what do you do? You want to add stuff to it, okay? You typically want to... Okay, so... Fine. Uh, you typically want to do... Uh, to add some more features and to our application, okay? So in order to do that, we need to... Uh, uh, add, uh, we have our plugin.js file, which was automatically generated for us, which some TypeScript fancy things in there. What do they do? Okay, so what you can do here, for example, is console log app uh, await while this, this application starts, await platformatic, okay, and we have entities and we have movie, okay, and then we have find. And we can, you know, just run it and save. And you can see that we have printed a report that on the other, on the other, uh, uh, on the other window. It's not reloading the process, by the way. It's all done by the same process running. It's pretty magical. So what we can do with this, it's, uh, uh, for example, we can say that we can add a, 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 a titles route, and we can get this. And make ooh, and make our um, and return an array of titles because we just want a route called titles. Cool, right? So I can just save this. I can open up a new uh, a terminal and I can just go to titles and it's just working as expected. Okay, I've not loaded my system by the way. Um, so now I can even do something. Interesting, I can do app GraphQL extend schema and I can just say that I want to uh, extend type uh, graph, uh, query and I want the uh, titles and the titles is just a string. And then I need to app uh, GraphQL define resolvers and I need to do query and I want titles, oh yeah, great. And then I can do, Ooh. return the same thing as I was doing before. And now, let's see if the demo gods are with me. The demo gods are always, you know, funny. And we can do query and titles. And here we go, titles. Um, and I can get the, it didn't reload, huh. gosh, did I make some mistake, titles, let's see, oh, ha, yeah, you see it's complaining, I should get it hooked up with the notification for the demos, so it's typo capital S, cool, so now it says it's reloaded correctly, okay, so now I can actually reload this. Coach. Yeah. Sorry. Service unavailable, funny enough. Okay. So now I can say titles and it's, I can say titles. Okay. It's working as expected. And I can actually run it. Oh. Cannot present value. Oh, yes. Of course. Of course I can't. Because I, this is wrong. So instead, I need to do. It, uh, I get an error because this is not what I need. So this is movies, it's not titles. So I need to return movies.map m and m.title. 
cool. Now maybe it's working. Would you work? Okay, it's working. <laughs> um, so it automatically reloads, okay, most of the time. It's minus bugs. And uh, so, cool, um, yeah. Uh, but you know, you know that later on we have a TypeScript panel, right? So what about TypeScript? Like, I have types, but you know, can I write my plugin in TypeScript? Well, you know what? Do you know what this is? It's a YubiKey. Why do I need a YubiKey on stage? Okay. I'm plugging my YubiKey in, and you know, I'm going to, the, to my platformatic local copy, and uh, I'm going to release the TypeScript support. So in order to do that, I'm just, you know, I'm, my setup is very vanilla, so I'm just uh, bumping the major version on the module. Then I'm doing scripts and uh, sync version, which has done what it, it, you think it's doing. Then I'm doing pmpm-r publish-odp, which this is why I need the YubiKey, and uh, this little utility to get my OTP for from, from, from the YubiKey, so that's very fancy. And, uh, oh, yeah, I need to commit. This, I love this. I'm mine on end, my sas. Look, I'm doing it live, as I said. <laughs> okay, so I'm pushing. It's pushed. Publishing. <laughs> so it's taking a bit of time on my computer is actually a little bit faster because it's almost instantaneous, but you know, it's, uh, it's, it's doing its job. And uh, it's, uh, here we go. And one is up, the other one is up. Um, We're going to do a demo with all of this uh, tomorrow afternoon. So if you're willing to check it out and doing a little bit of movies and quotes together, we are having some fun, okay? And uh, here we go. <laughs> Takes some time. Um, hopefully the OTP token is not going to exhaust itself. Let's see. Um, you know, things can go wrong. Uh, on my machine, it's always like that. Okay. We are getting through. Cool. Um, so while we are doing this, and uh, I'm going to demo TypeScript in a second, okay? I just want to go a little bit more on, on the slides. Okay, so where did I put this? Cool, um, so how is it possible? How does it work? Platformatic DB is just a Fastify application which has some modules inside. So we have SQL Mapper, which is, provides us that utility to get the entities and do some very simple queries. We have a SQL GraphQL model and a SQL Open API module to actually do SQL uh, translate the mapping to GraphQL and OpenAPI. And you can add your routes and resolvers. So if you want to write something bis complex business logic, you could just use your routes and resolvers. But if you want some CRUD and get up, up to speed very quickly, it's just there. Oh, by the way, we also report authorization. So um, that's, a different, uh, that's a different talk. So, but uh, check it out, it's all in the docs. Uh, something very interesting though, is that you can even take it the completely opposite step and just use our modules, you know, because they are modules on NPM, so you can just use uh, add platformatic slash SQL mapper and add platformatic slash SQL GraphQL on your own application, to, uh, on your own Fastify application, just to reduce some of the work, so, and speed it up your normal development. No need for, for any fancy stuff. You, you lose the fancy live reload thing, it, that mo almost works, but the rest is, uh, uh, is over there. Um, last but not least, uh, uh, did I just code an ORM? For you to decide, okay? Uh, and before this, let's go and talk about TypeScript, okay? Yeah, you see, the OTP exhausted itself. So here we go, uh, authorization, authenticator, and it's, here we go, where is NPM? NPM. Here we go, okay. Come and past. Here we go. Cool. Here we go. It's it's up, and uh, uh, we have uh, Platformatic 0.2 uh, published on the network. So now we could do is 
CD, make dear node conf two, and npm i platformatic dash g, and just update it because we just released it, so I'm just updating the thing. Okay. And um, after this, we can actually run it with TypeScript. Let's see if it works. Hopefully, the demo gods are with me. Still have time, right? I was supposed to take a little bit, uh, take a little five minutes longer or something. So I was. Uh, I'm filling in time. So, good. So we have Platformatic installed. Okay. So now it's, we can verify everything is there. Platformatic-v 0.2.0. Hooray. Okay. So now I can do notconf2, and then I can do Platformatic db um, init dash dash types, type script. And yay, we got something very interesting in. So I need a package JSON to add my modules and install some stuff that are needed, some dependencies to add the types. Then we can do platformatic db migrate. Oh, sorry, need migrate. Cool. Then we have a plugin.js file, plugin.ts file. Whoa. It's a TypeScript file. And now what we can do in here, we have, can do uh, platformatic entities and movie and everything is working as well uh, as you would expect. Uh, how it works? There is a types folder that's automatically created for you that will create all the types for your, for your app automatically. And uh, uh, it's uh, just very simple types, by the way. They're not anything fancy, but it's uh, good enough for, for most use cases. So uh, having said that, and having demoing something like TypeScript on stage, which is something that I would never thought I would do, <laughs> you know, it's, um, uh, I just wanted to thank you for, for, for coming, okay? And uh, I just uh, uh, let you say, ask you for, to go to uh, platformatic.dev, maybe we also have a Discord community and everything, so please sign up. And uh, we'll notify you, we don't spam you, but please sign up if there is, uh, so we can let you know about some of the new stuff we will be building and releasing soon. And thank you for having me today.